Good morning. Are you blessed? Those who are blessed say amen. amen. Right. And those who are grateful say amen. 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 So we are blessed and we are all grateful to the Lord. Again, a pleasant good morning to, to everybody. And um, glory to God for another opportunity to serve Him and uh, to worship Him in spirit and in truth. And I was uh, just want to say uh, good morning to our sister Debbie Petro. He's, she's here. <laughs> um, finally. Finally, meeting her in person. <laughs> Good morning. And of course, also, we have a visitor uh, on the team. She's here with us. Good morning. Thank you, Tim, for um, being here with us, joining us in our worship service. Thank you, Brother Rex, for the prayer. Appreciate that. And uh, the last of the prayer, Brother Rex said, uh, Declaration of love to God. And it's a wonderful thing to say that we love God. It's our declaration of our thankfulness. And not also thankfulness, but also declaration of our gratefulness to God. So again, are you grateful? Amen. 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 Before I go to the lesson, um, I would just like to say a few words about What's going on with the world? Uh, recently, um, we know what, what's happening now in Israel. So I just want to uh, point it out that uh, we should keep calm, you know, continue praising God, continue to keep the faith, continue to pray for one another, and continue serving the Lord. Continue doing what you're doing for the Lord. Right? And you know, we can make this world a better place to live for everybody. You know, we can make a difference. As all of us are servants of God, we can make a difference, you know. Well, uh, I usually say this. We might not, uh, a, a simple act of kindness, just a small act of kindness, it won't probably change the world. But for somebody we can change the world for that someone. Okay. So be grateful, do your act of kindness, and pray for one another. So this morning, um, what we will be uh, talking will be um, about gratefulness. About gratefulness. The way of gratefulness. You know, gratefulness is the byproduct of blessedness. Okay? It is a byproduct of being blessed by God. We are grateful because we are blessed by the Almighty. And uh, those who cannot see God's blessing in them cannot be really grateful because they are so blinded by their own selfish agendas. You know? And last Sunday, again, we talked about being, we are all blessed by God and how we are all blessed by God. Even if how stubborn our hearts is, God continue to bless each and every one of us. Okay? And again, we are just too blind to see the blessings of God in each and every one of us. And uh, again, I mentioned about we put the if, we put a condition to God as if we are so privilege or, you know, that uh, we can demand from God everything and anything that we, could, that we can ask from God. You know, we want to dictate our terms to God. And also, okay, we don't see God's blessings because we look at other people's blessing and compare it to what we have or to what we don't have. That's why we are so unhappy. We are so miserable with our life. And that's why we, we cannot be thankful and we cannot be grateful to God because we cannot see 
got blessings in our own self. Okay? Gratitude, it is such a fundamental importance to God because it represents our hearts. It represents your heart of glorifying God. As I always say, you know, we, we don't see God's blessing in us. And as we don't see that, we deny, we deny God of the glory and praise that he truly deserved. In Romans chapter 121, for though they knew God, they did not glorify him as God or show gratitude. Instead, their thinking became worthless. Their senseless hearts were darkened. Now, our inability, okay, our inability to give God the glory that he deserved through all his blessings starts with our willful act of gratitude. Okay? And it starts with the choice. The choice to, to thank God. The choice to be grateful for all his blessings. And to ignore God, to ignore the blessings, sorry, to ignore the blessings of God is to ignore God to ignore who he really is. But the verse tells us that we know God. You know, our willful choice of not glorifying him and even thanking him shows what? It shows our pure ignorance. Our pure ignorance of God and displaying our arrogance before him. Okay. Now, it says with the futility of our hearts and minds, we are claiming that what we have has nothing to do with God, but everything to do with ourselves and ourselves alone. And according to verse 22 of Romans 121, we claim to be wise, but actually we are all fools before God. Also, by not giving things to God and by saying that all that you have, all that I have, does not come from God. It comes from our own effort. We make God a liar. In Psalm 24, verse 1, the earth is the Lord's, the earth, and everything in it, the world and all its people belong to him. Hallelujah. Including you and I. I belong to God. Everything that you see, everything that you see, we are just a caretaker. We don't own anything. God owns everything, even our very own life. Now, the very first thing that a man must do is to know who God is. And that is to acknowledge that everything belongs to God. And by doing so, it shows your humility. It shows your submission to God. Submission to the Creator, us being His creation. Without this, you know, we will be forever antagonist with God. The Lord has a rightful claim to our lives. Psalm 24, verse 1. He owns everything. And guess what? Not only by this verse, actually the Lord owns us in two ways. Psalm 24, verse 1 tells us He created everything, and everything in it belongs to Him. And in John, 1 John chapter 2, verse 2 tells us, He is the atoning sacrifice for our sins. God owns us, owns our lives in two ways, by, by way of creation and by way of redemption. 1 John chapter 2, verse 2. It is just through our stubbornness and futility of our thinking to say that we have what we have and nothing to do with God. You see, Psalm 24, verse 1 tells us He owns you. And 1 John chapter 2, verse 2, by way of redemption, God owns us. He got everything belongs to God. But why do we even need to thank God in the first place? Okay. Why do we even need to be grateful to God? Psalm 50 verse 14 tells us, Offer to God thanksgiving and pay your vows to Him. Okay. Pay your vows to the Most High. It is because it's a command by God. To thank God, to be grateful to God, is a command by the Lord. A command must be done. You must do the command of God. Without doing the command of God, we violate the command of God, and as such, we commit a great sin before the Lord. Our thanksgiving and our gratitude is demanded by God from all of us. That's why 
We give glory to him. We give thanks to him. We glorify him. We, we are so grateful to him. You know, some other translations puts it, offer to God a sacrifice of thanksgiving. The word sacrifice does not denote, you know, bringing of animals, uh, or burnt offerings. In the Old Testament, they do that. But now, in the, in the New Testament, our sacrifice is our praises to Him. Our sacrifice is our own lives by giving it to the Lord. Okay? Now, when we don't give our thankfulness to God, you and I will be held accountable to God. Okay? God demands our gratitude for He truly deserves our gratitude. Our scripture reading tells us, You are worthy, O Lord, our God, to receive what? To receive glory and honor and power. For you created all things, and they exist because you created what you please. So God demands us to be grateful to him because he deserves to be, to be praised and to be worshipped. So why is gratitude important? Number one, it keeps our feet leveled to the ground. Again, our gratitude, it talks about our humility to God. And humility before God equates to a God-centered you know, life because we acknowledge that everything we have comes from God. You know, let me encourage you that don't ever think that what you have now really belongs to you. Don't ever think that what you have now really comes from your own. As a servant of God, we must think that all that we have comes from God. And it's a blessing from God. Okay? Now, as we live a Christ-centered life, it's all about Him. It's all about Him. Okay? The antonym or the, the reverse of humility is pride and arrogance. Okay? The opposite of God-centered life or Christ-centered life is man-centered life. Selfishness. Okay? So without gratitude, there is what? There is pride. And I love my pride chicken, Jollibee, <laughs> McDonald. Okay. So, you know, if, if, you are, if you don't have that gratitude in you, there will be pride, arrogance, and self-centered. Oh, I forgot. El pollo loco. <laughs> you know, self-centered because we believe that everything comes from our own power, from our own self. Okay? But a Christ-centered life is one that is humble before God. And it's all about Him. Okay? So it is about God, and our gratitude keeps our feet level to the ground. It keeps you focused on God's blessings in you. One of the benefits when we constantly give thanks to God is it keeps our focus on the blessings of God in our lives. When you always say, Lord, thank you. Okay. Before you eat, you, get, you have your meal. Lord, thank you. It will, not take, it will not take you five minutes to thank the Lord. It will not take you even four minutes to thank the Lord. Every time you have your meal, not unless you have something, so many things to say to God. Okay. But when you are about to take your meal, you don't, you don't even have to close your eyes. You know, I was like, Lord, thank you. You know, you just sit down there, just be quiet for a few moments. Just say your, 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 your gratitude to God. Okay? And when you do that, when you do that, it focuses you on God's blessings. You don't care about other people's blessings because you are so focused in what God is giving you. Okay. Every morning when you wake up, thank you. Before you go to work, Lord, guide me. When you arrive at work, Lord, thank you. You see, it won't take you even one minute to thank the Lord, to be grateful to God. Right? So it reminds us of all the blessings in us. When we are grateful to God, each and every day, each and every moment of your life, 
It keeps you focused on God's blessing. It keeps you focused on what you have rather than what you don't have. It keeps us happy. If we focus on God's blessings, we lean towards positive, you know, positivity of life, the positive side of life. We lean towards happiness. Okay? And therefore, as we focus on the positive side of life, we appreciate life more and more and more. And as you appreciate life more, it means that you are satisfied. Correct? So when you are satisfied, then you are happy because you are satisfied, because you are content. But if you are not satisfied, your face will always be like this. But then, you know, I, I, I'm 40 years old, but I look like a grumpy old man when I always have this. Do you believe I'm 40 years old? Of course you believe. Okay. Psalm 144 verse 15 tells us, Blessed or happy are the people to whom such blessings fall. Blessed or happy are the people whose God is the Lord. David was talking about the blessings of God. Okay. Psalm 144, okay. let me go to 12 to 14. Okay. He, he was talking about their sons will be like nurtured plants and their daughters will be like pillars carved to adorn a palace. He talked about how their barns would be filled with every kind of provision. Their livestock will increase. He talked about no breaching of walls and there be no crying in the streets. Now notice how David mentioned what they have. David did not mention what they do not have. And he was not asking what they don't have. He was magnifying what they will have and what they have. The sons and daughters represents our families in good condition, having a good life. If you have your family living a wonderful life, you know, you put them in good school, you have a good life. The barns filled up and the livestock increased were about our daily sustenance that God provides. Every day when you wake up, we always have your, your, either your breakfast or your brunch, but you will have your meal every day. You will have your, your cloth every day. You see, God sustains us every day. And the no breaching of walls and no cry of distress in the streets represents the peace that we all have. See? So we are all blessed by God. All this means that we live with prosperity and we live with peace. And finally, David said, happy. Okay? Happy are we because we have these kinds of blessings in verse 15. We are so happy because God has bestowed us all of these blessings. So when we constantly give thanks to God for all of these things, it keeps us what? It keeps us happy. The next, it magnifies God that is in you. When you constantly give thanks to God, when you are so grateful and you give your gratitude to God, it magnifies the God that is in you. You are not magnifying yourself, but you are magnifying the God that lives in you. Have you noticed that people that are close to someone, you know, somehow they know if that person have a problem. Okay? like your family members. Your family members would know if you have a problem, even if you try to hide it. Your closest friends will know if, you have, if there's something wrong with you, even if you try to hide it. For example, if I ask Brother Pete, Brother Pete, how are you? And he would say, oh, Brother Mike, I'm good. I'm good. I can tell there's nothing wrong with him. The next time I come up to him, Brother Pete, how are you? Brother Mike, I'm good. I will know that there's something wrong with him. Because his usual, usual smile will be up to his ears. You see, even if he tries to hide it, sometimes when we try to hide it, we are not conscious about how we do things. But the people around us, they know, they can sense that there's something wrong with you. 
And that is because of familiarity and pattern. The people around you are familiar with you. Okay? They are so familiar with you, they know your character. They know your, your, your actions. They know how, how your smile looks like. Okay? They, one time, a friend of mine told me that my smile is like Joker. <laughs> my smile like a Joker. And pattern, because you have a pattern that you always do, because that's who you are. And when you try to hide that pattern, okay, people will notice it. Okay? Now, the reason I said these things is that what's really inside a person's heart will be manifested outwardly, even if you try to hide those feelings in you. Okay? Now, if we are so grateful to God, it will manifest in our lives. There will be a glow in your eyes. Okay? You will always look you know, happy because you are so grateful to God. Luke 6.45 tells us, a good man brings good things out of the good stored up in his heart. And an evil man brings evil things out of the evil stored up in his heart. For the mouth speaks what the heart is full of. You see, a good person who sees God's generosity and blessings in his life, from the goodness, from the goodness of his heart, he will speak what? He will speak honor, glory, and praises to God. You will manifest a happy and also a contented life, even though you are facing so much challenges in your life. Okay. You will be motivated every day because of you have so much to thank God for. It. Okay. People will, will look at you, you are full of hope. You are full of good vibes. You, you always have that infectious smiles on you. Okay. They see that God is really residing. He resides in you. And that's what makes us different from non-believers because we have God. God keeps us happy all the time. Our love for God, our gratitude for God, it keeps us happy. Do you know that when you live this kind of life, when you are truly happy, when you are truly grateful to God, you are giving a uh, uh, giving hope to other people. Okay? Now, Jesus clearly says that we are the light of this world. You are the light of the person, of the other person living in unhappiness. If the other person is unhappy, okay, infect that person. Infect that person to be happy. Now, they will see that what they are missing is gratitude from the heart towards God. And soon find out that God is truly what is lacking in their life. Okay. So they will see, why, why, why is this person always happy? Why is this person always seems contented in his life? Although I've, I've, I've seen his family, I have more then this person, see, but how is it that he is always happy? You see, that person will see what is lacking, and he will see that he is lacking Jesus Christ. When you have God, remember this, when you have Jesus Christ, you have everything that you need for in life. Amen. You will you don't lack, you will not lack anything when you have the Lord in your life. Okay. In Matthew 5, 16, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works. And then what? Glorify your Father in heaven. So when you focus on your blessings, it magnifies the God that is in you. And you are giving hope to people. It fosters good relationship. When we learn that God commands us commanded us to thank him and that he deserves your praises, thankfulness is an action that is from, from inside outward. Okay. Thankfulness, gratitude is from inside, from you, outside, towards God, from us, 
to God. It recognizes the giver of the blessings in your life. And it is our response to God's goodness, to God's mercy, to God's love. So as we thank God, it glorifies God and it fosters a good relationship with Him. So how do we show gratitude to God? Well, simply by saying, Lord, thank you. That's one. That's one. Luke 17, 12 to 17. When Jesus met the ten lepers, okay, only one leper came back. Verse 16, and the leper fell down on his face at his feet, giving thanks to Jesus Christ. And he was a Samaritan. So Jesus answered and said, Were there not ten cleats? But where are the nine? And look at verse 15. And one of them, when he saw that he was healed, returned and with a loud voice glorified God and he fell down on his feet. Now, two simple words. Okay, two simple words. Thank you. And yet, they are so hard to say because we are too blind to see the giver. Very simple words. Thank you. Or we'll make it three. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. But it is so hard for so many people to utter because we are so blinded by our own selfish agendas and we put a, the if to God as if you know, we have the right to demand from God. See? Every day we are so blessed by God. Maybe because, you know, it's hard for us to say, thank you, Lord. Maybe because the, these blessings that God has given us are just too common. Okay? They are just too common to be mindful to thank God for. You know, every day when, you're, when God wakes you up, maybe for you it's just too common. Every time you take our meal, we take our meal. Maybe the reason why we, di we, we don't give thanks to God is because uh, it's too common that I have my meal every day. Maybe that's how people look at it. See, but even how too common is it? Uh, it is. It is God's blessing. Okay? And maybe we think that we are so entitled. We are so entitled to God for more. That when God gave you your meal, you don't give thanks to God because that's too common. And you, you want to be entitled to a more you know, sumptuous meal. Entitlement. That's very dangerous, my dear brethren and friends. Entitlement. Sometimes we feel so entitled. Okay? And our entitlement to God is that we demand from God. That's why we don't see God's blessings in us because what we are seeing is us in the place of God. Okay? Now, remember, in verse in, in, in Luke chapter 17, okay, there were nine lepers, but only one that came to God, to Jesus Christ, and say, thank you, when he got healed. Okay. Many of us today are still enslaved by the spirit of what? The spirit of ingratitude. You know, God cherishes, he likes you know, our gratitude for him. He cherishes our gratitude for him. He is happy when you say, Lord, thank you. You know, God is sensitive. Do you know that? God is sensitive. He is sensitive to sins. He hated it. He is sensitive when you love and serve other gods. That's why he said, I am a jealous God. He is sensitive. He is sensitive when we don't offer our words of thank you to God. We are offending God because we take his gifts and his blessings for granted. Now, hear what Jesus said in verse 17. Okay. In verse 17, were there not ten plans, but where are the nine? Jesus wants to hear our sacrifice, your sacrifice of thanksgiving. Lord, I thank you. Lord, thank you. And this kind of thankfulness must stem from a grateful heart. It must be intentional. It must be intentional. And it should not be just an instinctive instinct. 
without even thinking. No. When you think to God, when you thank God, when you when you will have your meal, or later when you have your lunch, okay, be intentional in thanking the Lord. Don't just do it because you just, you know, oh, there's a meal. Oh, thank you. No, but be intentional. Be intentional when you thank God because you are truly thankful to the blessings that God that has given you and that you are about to take. Okay. Now, every time we think we, we forget to thank God, He doesn't like it. God is sensitive. Okay. Now, glorify God. How do we show our gratitude? We glorify God. It is more than the utterance. It is more than the saying of our thank you. God wants us to glorify Him. He deserves it. Again, in Revelation 4.11, tells us, You are worthy, O Lord our God, to receive glory. But how? In 1 Chronicles chapter 16, though I, I will not go through it, but I encourage you to read 1 Chronicles chapter 16. David, he instructs Asap, okay, the chief minister of the Ark of the Covenant, how to praise and glorify God. Okay. Now, let me just go and read verse 29 of 1 Chronicles chapter 16. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due His name. You see, the glory due His name. Bring an offering and come before Him. Worship the Lord in the splendor of His holiness. In the Old Testament, again, offering comes in a way of sacrificing burnt offering to God. But in the New Testament and in our time, Romans 12, chapter 1 tells us to present our bodies. Our body becomes now our living sacrifice to God. Holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Okay. This is how we give glory to God by offering our own self to God. Okay. Now, in, in, the, in the story of the ten lepers, again, notice the, the one leper, okay. what he did, he brought his offering. Okay. He brought his offering to Jesus Christ. He said, thank you. Okay. And he came before Jesus Christ. He came back because not only that he wanted to show, to give thanks personally to Jesus Christ, but he wanted to serve the Lord Jesus Christ. You see? We show our gratitude by not only saying thank you to God, but also giving your life to the Lord. Just like the leper, in the same manner that we must bring forth your offering of thanksgiving and come before the Lord with your own sacrifice, with your own life to God. Again, going back to Romans chapter 1, 21, See, it is not enough that we know God or we know that this blessing comes from God. God wants us to show our gratitude and the glory He rightfully deserves. Okay? He wants us to give us our life to Him. And this clearly shows, okay? for though they knew God, okay, they did not glorify Him as God or show gratitude. It shows what? The rebellious heart of humanity. Our rebellious heart. A heart that wants nothing to do with God. You know, but it's quite ironic and counterintuitive. Many people, they don't, uh, they, they, they don't want, you know, they don't want anything to do with God. They think that what they have belongs to them. But here's the thing. We had totally forgotten, we have totally forgotten that we are so totally dependent on God. Okay? Again, you know, our heart wants nothing to do with God. But we have forgotten, you have forgotten, you and I, we are totally, listen, you are totally, we are totally dependent on God. Then how can we say that we don't want anything to do with God when you are totally dependent upon Him? Quite ironic and counterintuitive to think that way. 
we are all created by God and everything that you and I have belongs to God. And God wants your life. Not only the utterance of our Lord, thank you, but God wants your life because He deserves it. He deserves it. Isaiah 42 verse 8. God made it crystal clear when He said, I am the Lord. That is my name. I will not give my glory to another, nor my praise to idols. When he said the word, I am the Lord, that is my name, it is God's declaration of who he is, that he is sovereign, and that he has all authority, even in our lives. That he is omnipotent, omniscient, omnipresent, self-existing, you know, and, and we all exist because of God. And he said, I will not give my glory to another nor my praise to idols. It is the outcome of the first statement of God. It is a demand for full devotion. Okay? A demand for full devotion entirely to God and God alone. Because he said, I am the Lord. You know, a man who mastered the art of gratitude and who threw himself in the service of God, even in the midst of great challenges in his life, he will remain happy whatsoever. Do you agree? Do you agree? He will remain forever be happy. Because that person found a secret to real happiness, and that is Jesus Christ. Apostle Paul said, rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Apostle Paul, for him, this is not just an empty words. He lived these words. We know how Apostle Paul lived, and we know what happened to him. We know how he suffered so much for Jesus Christ. So this is not just a... a, a Blurting of words. No. This is not just an empty words, but a real words that he lived by. And notice how Ephesians chapter 5 tells the same. Sing and make music from your heart to the Lord, always giving thanks to God the Father for everything in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, how can be a person behind bars, in prison, in Rome, tell such a wonderful message that despite of him being beaten, despite of him being inside prison, he was telling us those that are outside the prison, you sing and be happy. Amen. Can you imagine yourself being inside the prison? You know, in a dark prison and with little food or no food, and then telling the people, rejoice. <laughs> Can you imagine yourself doing that? Rejoice, sing, always be happy, always giving thanks to God. Can you imagine the message of Apostle Paul? And Apostle Paul lived those words. And even Job said that, should we accept from God only good and not adversity. In all of this, Job did not seem in what he said. You know, Job, Paul, and all other servants like you, my dear brethren, I know why you are so happy, because you found the secret to real happiness, and that is Jesus Christ. Amen? Can I hear an amen? Amen. Amen. Now, brethren and friends, Gratitude is a start of a true, genuine relationship with God. It is simple. It is so simple. But it, it, it demands intentionality. Being deliberate, being mindful, that comes from a truly grateful heart. You cannot have a wonderful relationship with, her, with God if you have 
and in gratitude in you, an ungrateful heart in you. You must start to have a gratitude, a grateful heart that lives in you. And finally, I want to read a letter to all of you that was given by a brother in Christ. A picture perfect of gratitude and what glorifying God means. And I pray that we should all do the same. This is the letter from a brother, and I add it up. I thank Christ, our Lord, who has given me strength to do his work. He considered me trustworthy and appointed me to serve him, even though I used to blaspheme the name of Christ. In my insolence, I persecuted these people, but God had mercy on me because I did it in ignorance and unbelief. Oh, how generous and gracious our Lord was. He filled me with the faith and love that come from Jesus Christ. This is a trustworthy saying and everyone should accept it. Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners and I am the worst of them. But God had mercy on me so that Christ Jesus could use me as a prime example of his great patience with even the worst sinners. Therefore, then others will realize that they too can believe in him and receive eternal life. All honor and glory to God forever and ever. He is the eternal king, the unseen one who never dies. He alone is God. Amen. And this letter comes from a brother in Christ, and his name is Paul. In 1 Timothy chapter 1, 12 to 17. God bless you all. And for those that are here who have not yet accepted the Lord, the song is invitation is for you and for all of us. And we encourage you to come forward and accept the Lord Jesus Christ into your hearts. Repent of your sins and be baptized for the remissions of your sins. God bless you all. To God be the glory.